some ways to use misconceptions to help students learn. Let's look at some examples. Textbook 2A, the lesson on subtracting with renaming, students have to solve a problem like this. There are 23 pencils, 5 pencils are removed, how many pencils are left in the holder? Of course, the students do 23 minus 5. And the girl Hannah, she said, I subtract 3 ones from 5 ones. That's incorrect. That's a misconception. That's a common mistake among children. So his friend said, Hannah is wrong. Why? So that is one way we use misconceptions to help children learn, by presenting it to them and let them think about it. Another way is when incorrect ideas surface in class. For example, in a lesson where we try to figure out how many halves are there in three-fourths. If this represents one, the shaded parts represent three-fourths or three-quarters. And we ask students, how many halves are there in three-fourths? And perhaps they did this. And they say there are six halves in three quarters because they did that. They were thinking that this is half. So a teacher might then ask, is that true? Are there indeed six halves in three quarters? Is that really a half? If this is a half, then two of these make one. Do two of these make one? Not really. Two of these make one fourth. How many of this make one? Eight of this make one, the students might say. Oh, so that's not a half. That's an eighth. So our friend was actually saying that there are six eighths making three fourths rather than six halves making three fourths. That's another way we can use students' misconceptions to help them learn. When it happens, we ask them, is that right? And then we scaffold their learning and lead them to see that the incorrect idea is indeed not correct and lead them to see what is the correct idea. Instead of saying, no, that's wrong, can you try again? We can ask them to think about it and that will bring about deeper learning. Say in an example where we try to get students to divide 52 by 4, sometimes students give methods that we do not expect. You know, methods that don't work so easily. For example, a student might say, one way to do 52 divided by 4 is to break 10 into 4, 4, and 2. So if 10 is 4, 4, and 2, 52, of course, there's a bunch of 10s. There are five 10s. So if each 10 is made out of 4, 4, and 2, five tens clearly there's a bunch of fours and there's a bunch of twos plus you know it's really 52 so there's really another two so all in all 52 is really 10 fours and six twos so 52 if you see it as 10 fours and six twos and you want to divide this by four it's really not that obvious, you know, 10 divided by 4, 10 fours divided by 4, or 6 twos divided by 4, it's really not that convenient. The way you want it is really perhaps 40 and 12. But here you have a student who offer a response that is unexpected, not incorrect, but unexpected, and may not lead to the solution easily. What we can then do is to ask the students, it seemed not to work, you know, 10 put into four groups, not so easy. Six put into four groups, not so easy. Can you challenge yourself and try to make it work? That's another way to use, not misconception, but unexpected ways of thinking, which may not be the one intended or the one that's most efficient. And we present it back to them again and ask them, it doesn't seem to work. Can you make it work? Those are some examples where teachers use students' misconceptions to help children learn. If you enjoyed the video, then why not hit the like button? Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so.
to stay up to date with our latest videos. If you want to check out more videos, then click on the right to dive into another topic. Thanks for watching!